Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I have with me today a very special young lady, and her name is Madeline Carroll. She was Shannon on the film. And um, I've seen her grow. I've known her. Mo- your mom and I actually did the numbers. We, we were like, how long have I known? I thought I'd known you since two or three. I've actually known you since you were one year old. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you. We did the numbers with mom, and we were like, okay, oh, yeah. <laughs> she was one year old. And to see your journey and how God has just rocked your world and, uh, and used you in so many amazing ways is, is just phenomenal. Let me tell you a little bit about Madeline. She's done a few movies uh, like, here we go, we got Flipped. We got The Spy Next Door. We got one of my favorites, Resident Evil. That's right. Don't hate. Don't start being religious on me. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Popper's Penguins, uh, Swing Vote, and many other, not only movies, but also shows, TV shows like Criminal Minds and other stuff like that. But beyond all of the, the Hollywood stardom, let me tell you something. This woman is a God-fearing, God-loving, uh, obedient woman of God who follows God's direction, God's plan, God's vision, and uh, knowing her for all these years and her family, who have been just an amazing family and friends to us, um, I have seen the consistency, and it's rare to find a Christian that has consistency. It is so rare, but right here today with us is Madeline Carroll, so help me give up some really elevate church love for this mighty woman. Madeline Carroll, come on up, girl. Yes. All right, round number three. Here we go. Number three, well, check this out. So one year old, golly, makes me feel old. <laughs> no, it shouldn't make you feel Just old. One year. We I only can't. go from glory to glory. <laughs> That's true. You know? I love that. I love <laughs> that. So let's talk about this. So you're, you're, you did this film. This is your first faith-based film. And what's interesting is whenever Hollywood gets involved with films like this, they always mess them up. Yeah. You know, they screw them up, and it just becomes this weird thing. And I love what you said because you said that Hollywood thinks more about the money and, and not really the message, right? Mm-hmm. But being that this is a Christian film, I mean, it did really well at the box office. It did. Uh, I can only imagine it was the highest grossing indie movie of 2018. And um, it was so cool is they, there were, like, <coughs> news outlets that reported – that it was only going to make X amount of money. Like, I think they estimated two to six or seven million total, um, which is what the budget was. The budget was seven million, and it made uh, over $80 million. Yeah. Yeah, completely insane. Like, like, unreal. Yeah. Like, God really moved. But the best part was that I love how the people who said that it wouldn't had to report and say that it did. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's, that's Shame amazing. on them. No. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's so real. And uh, actually, I went back and looked at $86 million. Oh, my for- God. Yeah, something like some crazy like that, which is incredible because now it's just opened up the the door for more Christian films. Yes, and uh, and that's a exciting. miracle, really. So so I I didn't share this, but because of Imagine um, coming out and doing so well, the Irwin brothers who made I can only imagine they kept saying. Um, you know, if Imagine does well, our dream is, uh, you know, the vision God's put on our heart is that we'd make this production company called Kingdom, and it would kind of be like Marvel or, you know, WB or one of those things, but it would be for all Christian content and all inspiring content, and uh, that, you know, that's our dream if Imagine does well, and then Lo and behold, the Lord blessed Imagine, and because it did so well, Lionsgate was like, we need to have them, you know, on on the team. So they formed Kingdom, and Kingdom is a real thing today. And um, yeah, we just I love that name. Kingdom, um, they uh, they just uh, God give me the opportunity uh, that I never dreamed I would ever have with um, getting to um, work with them again, and the capacity that God had me called back to them was um they kept saying to me when imagine was coming out you know we just really believe that like the lord's called you to like producing and directing and writing and and i just believe that that's in you and um and then when they created kingdom they had me come to like this like party of like launching kingdom right and i'm literally pastor i'm there and i'm by myself and i'm in this room with like all these executives and stuff and i'm thinking lord like why am i here you know like why why am I here? I had a stirring in my spirit. And then a few days later, their assistant at the time, Geraldine, uh, now she's like head of creative development. Um, she texts me and she's like, hey, the brothers want you to come be a part of the writing team. And I was like, 
what? I didn't know what that was essentially. And I come and I'm literally like all like awkward and out of place. And they were like, yeah, so you're going to work on this. You're going to work on this. And they're like, Madeline, you're going to write the treatment for the Jeremy Camp movie. And I was like, what? And a treatment is basically like an outline of the story before it comes becomes a script. So they give me this task to do, and I literally never did it before. But because God had been preparing me for that season, I, like, kind of jumped at it, although I was so scared. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. So I literally go home, and I, like, lament before the Lord. I'm not kidding. I My laptop, like, they had to show me how to use it at <laughs> Apple. And I was like, God, you've got to move through me, and please, God, just anoint it and let it be you. So I did it, and I wrote it, and I turned it in, and I'm literally, like, biting my fingernails for a week. And um, they said, Madeline, this this is unbelievable and we want you to uh, help us write the script so then I stayed on helped them write the script and they just shot the movie in Alabama come on it's like crazy yeah now, <laughs> God is unreal now I, I, I love the fact everybody sees the highlights of your life right but nobody has seen the real of all the the, the the pain and the suffering and the setbacks tell them a little bit about your story how this whole thing with you even being in this position, it all started when you were how old? So I started acting at three and a half years old. Um, I was at a nail salon and it just so happened that there was a talent agent in the nail salon with me and she discovered me and signed me, ended up being my agent for 11 years. And um, God just put me on the path. And so um, I worked, you know, uh, pretty frequently. I started getting commercials and then um, after commercials, TV and then TV to movies. And my first lead role was a movie called Swing Vote. And when I got Swing Vote, that's kind of like, I'd worked a lot up until then, but Swing Vote kind of put me into a new category. And um, I started getting offers and I started going out on bigger things. And uh, my life just started changing really quick. And um, I started getting some... Uh, other opportunities too that just weren't really necessarily of the Lord, but it was really uh, kind of like a life changing decision that happened for me when I was 11 um, because I got offered this really big movie. Um, and it's uh, the best way I can describe it is like saying it was a Marvel movie of like 12 years ago. I was going to get to be a superhero. I went in, bought the comic, like so excited. And um, it, it got offered to me out of nowhere. And it was a three, uh, two picture deal. I was getting a million and a half for the first movie. The second movie I was getting more. It was going to be my own film. And um, it was just completely like a blessing out of nowhere. And so we really thought it was from the Lord. But when I read the script, um, it just was really kind of, my character was really kind of vulgar and there was a lot of stuff that I really wouldn't have been comfortable doing. So we prayed about it and we asked the director, like, would it be okay if you just changed it, changed my, my stuff and um, I'll still do it? And he was like, yeah, sure, we just really love you. And it was so unexplainable that he even liked me or, or, or cast me because he had seen me um, on an audition tape for something completely different. And the casting director just so happened to be friends with him. So it's completely like a miracle that this even got handed to me, right? So definitely was a test. And I, um, I, uh, they changed the content, we read the script, and um, I ended up signing on. Well, I go to a, a church that night, and um, the pastor asked me to come up and pray on a boy to receive hearing. And when I came up to pray on this little boy, I just kind of like something like shifted inside of me. And it was like I just knew that I wasn't supposed to do the movie. And, and I knew that I wasn't supposed to do the movie because I felt like it wasn't going to line up with where God was going to take me eventually, what the big vision was. Like it wasn't going to fit or it was going to hinder me or something. And um, so I ended up coming back to my seat, telling my mom I couldn't do it. And um, I just stood on that. I stood on what I felt like the Lord said to me. And everybody thought I was crazy. But um, what's actually cool is the director sent me, um, he sent me a Tiffany Cross necklace after I passed on it. And he understood that it was for, you know, religious belief. So um, then move forward um, from that sacrifice, I... Um, got other opportunities. And it was so awesome because the things that I said no to, God rewarded them um, and made it so easy for me that it wasn't questioning, that it wasn't, you know, hard. Like God literally just prepared a table for me in these other uh, situations. And I got, I got flipped and then I got Spinex Store and then I got Mr. Popper's Penguins. And it was really just the hand of God that um, those doors opened for me. Um, on Popper's, I walked into the callback in New York and I go up the elevator and the director's in the elevator with me and 
um, that's pretty uncomfortable. I was like, oh God, I have to go in and read for him right now. Like, what do I, what's the small talk that you even say? And he was like, hey, Madeline, I just want you to know that I've rigged this in your favor and that um, it doesn't matter who else is here today because this is yours. And all you have to do is go in and do what you've been doing and the part's yours. And like, that doesn't happen. And God just was so good and he really did just blow open the door. And so from there, God rewarded my faithfulness, continued to reward my faithfulness. And when I was 15, I got a movie called Machine Gun Preacher and I was promoting it. And I was just like on this high, I just went to the Toronto International Film Festival. Like all these exciting things were happening. And I was, um, you know, a name and I, I was getting offers and um, had just moved to a big agency and um, all these exciting things happening. And then all of a sudden, I wasn't anymore going to be like the daughter or like in school. I was going to be, you know, um, having to do nudity and they want, wanting me to, um, you know, just do like all the content just really changed. And I guess it's an age thing. Yes. But, um, it was, it was just definitely a time of shift because there used to be so much more that I would say yes to, that I would say no to. And then all of a sudden I'm saying no to more opportunities that I'm saying yes to. So that looked really bad on my behalf, especially to this new agency that's used to people just taking whatever. Oh my gosh, amazing opportunity. You're, you're going to get money and you're going to get, you know, fame and all these things. And, um, I was saying no consistently. And so that became really hard and them not understanding me or my heart was really hard. And so I really just kind of struggled for a year. And, um, and it was literally like the change was like, I was here and now I'm here by my own doing. Like it was my own fault that I was passing and saying no and all this stuff. And, and then when, when you say no, it's like so hard because then my agents were like, well, then what will she say yes to? So we'll just send in Sally over here because she's going to take it. So yeah. why would we bother sending you out? Because you're not even going to do it. And it got so bad to a point where like I would go in for some things and the casting directors would be like, oh my gosh, Madeline, we didn't even know that you were acting anymore. Wow. Like it, like they didn't even know I was still here. And that was like so hard. It was like, just really just hurtful of like going from one place to the other so fast and um, doing it for the Lord. And so I was like, all right, God, uh, I, I have to talk to you. So, so you need to tell me what you want me to do because I can't, I'm not going to play this game. I was like, this is too hard for me. And these people think I'm crazy. So I was like, God, if you want to call me into something else, I'm game. Like, let's do it. And so I said a prayer and the Lord gave me Isaiah 43. And in Isaiah 43, it's a long passage, but two of the verses that really stuck out to me is one says, um, uh, when you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. And when you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. And then it goes on to say at the end, behold, I do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? And I knew when I read that, I knew that I knew that I knew that God had something for me and it was going to be totally new. I didn't know what it was going to be, but he was going to meet me at the end of the journey. But I also knew that I was going into a hard season rather than coming out of a hard season. So I didn't necessarily have peace, but I had an agenda. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I said, all right, God, let's do this. And so um, I'm taking a walk down the beach and I, I'm praying and thanking the Lord for, you know, answering my prayer. And um, I see this man and he's like building the sandcastle and it literally had like rooms in it. I am not kidding. It was like intricate and like really big. And I remember thinking to myself as I passed it, I was like, gosh, that's so silly. Like why work so hard on something that's going to be gone? You know, if the waves are going to come and take it away. And I kept going, kept praying. I come back. And when I come back, the guy's gone. This thing got even bigger and these people are surrounding it, taking pictures of it, this crowd of people. Like it was insane. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, Madeline, that's exactly what I want to do with your life. I want to work on you and I want to make it something that people will literally stand in awe of. And I said, okay, God, let's do it. And so I'd like to tell you that after that, you know, I got a Marvel movie. But um, <laughs> what happened was I, I went another year, didn't get anything, another year nothing. Another year, nothing. Still passing on things. Passing on things, and then the things that I passed up, what happens is it's like this weird cycle. So it's like, okay, an opportunity comes down the line. All the girls my age go for it, right? And you take it, or you don't take it, or you get it, or you don't get it, but then whoever gets that part, and then it comes out, there's like a buzz around them. So then they 
get the things that you want. Does that make sense? So it's like I said no to, you know, um, even just this past year I said no to a show, and then that person who did it gets all this buzz for the things that you do want. So it's so hard. It's just like such a, like, weird kind of a thing, and um, it's really just a test of faithfulness. How, how yeah. much can I possibly yeah. trust God? Do you know what yeah. I mean? And um, so I uh, – I, Struggle another year, struggle another year, um, got a show, ended up having to leave the show because they wanted me to do something crazy um, that I didn't want to do. And um, just really just just devastating. But what's unbelievable is I remember the year that I left this show, um, it was a devastating time for me. I was like 19 years old. It was like the first thing that I had worked on in a while. And it happened because a friend of mine who remembered me from when I was younger asked me to come be on it. So, like, now his neck's in the news because I'm leaving. And it was just, it was awful. Like, I, it was just this really hard season, and no work was coming. And um, what's crazy, though, is, like we were talking about in the first service, the Bible always says in the process of time. So this was going on for me. And then over here, the Irwin brothers were doing their first movie the same year. And then in the process of time, three years later, you know, we were going to come together. And so I'm 19 years old, and I'm just uh, on the phone to my manager at the time, and there was another show, and I was going to have to do nudity. And I said, uh, no, I don't want to do it. And they were like, you know, it's the same thing. You know, fame, money, it's a really good income, really good pay, all this stuff. Um, And I said, no, I don't want to do it. And I said hold on, I, I'm going to hang up and I'm going to say a prayer. And literally, this is what I got told. Who are you going to pray to? I said, God. <sighs> He's not going to answer. And I said, all right, I'm going to hang up, say a prayer, and I'll call you back. So I hang up the phone, say my prayer, felt like I wasn't supposed to do wow. it. I call back, and I was like, yeah, I can't do it. And they were like, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you keep passing on things, and you keep saying no to these things. But, um, Madeline, you're, you're like an adult now. You're mature. Like, this is what you have to do. You have to transition. You have to transition into that kind of stuff, or, or I just don't really know what there is for you. And I am just a firm believer that when God's given you a gift, you don't have to prostitute it. And I said, Say okay, that again. God. Say that again. <laughs> like, when God has given you a gift, you don't have to prostitute it. And I said, uh, I said, no, yeah, I'm not going to do Yeah, come on. Give God it. a big hand. That's a, that is major. Keep going. Sorry to interrupt you. you. Um, And so I said, all right, uh, yeah, I I get off the phone to her, and she's pretty much just told me, and which is what the way I already felt, you know, was there's no option. There is absolutely no option for me. There has been no roles. There has been no scripts. There's been nothing, you know, that I could even possibly do, and I'm just devastated. I literally didn't see any way out, and I said, God, I can't. I cannot do this anymore. I cannot go on feeling like this. It was the worst depression I've ever experienced in my life. I literally felt like I was grieving, like like someone died, like somebody died, and I was grieving it. And I had went after something for 17, 18 years at that point, and I just wasn't. I wasn't seeing anything, and it was so dry. And I said, God. You told me, you told me, God, that this is what you had for me. You told me, God, that you wanted me to hang on. You told me, God, that you were going to do a new thing. Why I feel like an idiot. These people think I'm insane, and I've been waiting on him to show up. I've been waiting on him to prove that I'm not wrong and that they're wrong. Yeah. And I've been like, God, where where have you been? And I said, God, did I mishear you? Because, God, if I've misheard you, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry that I've wasted four or five years of my life. I'm so sorry, God. Was I supposed to do something else? Because, God, I'll do whatever it is that you want me to do. And I said, God, here's my dream. You're going to have it back because I'm disgusted. I felt like Hagar when she laid down her baby in the desert. I can't even look at it. I'm disgusted, Lord. I can't hold this anymore. I said, God, I feel like like you're you're waving something in front of me, and I can't get it, and it's it's making me sick. I'm physically becoming a sick person. I said, I can't do it. I said, God, you can have it. Take it back. I I'm 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 done. I'm not gonna hold it any longer. And I said, I'm gonna call my agents. So I stood up, literally, to call my agents. Thank you. 
And the next day, I'm, uh, oh, and, and word for word, I said this prayer, and this was unbelievable. I said, God, I'm not going one more day feeling like this. I'm not going one more day feeling this depression or this anxiety. Right. I said, I rebuke it, I bind it, and I leave it at your feet because I'm not playing it anymore. And I said, Lord, I'm done. And so I went to stand up, and it was literally, honest to goodness, it was like the Holy Spirit pulled me back down, and, and I vomited out. But God, if you still called me here, and this is still what you want from me, then you have to send me something. And I said, better yet, send me something that would edify you, and that will be my sign that I'm still called to be here. So I get up, and the next day, I'm sitting in a diner by my house, and I'm, I remember just looking at this cup of coffee, and I was just like so defeated like so defeated and just disgusted and I'm thinking how am I going to word it how am I going to say it and like, these people are going to like shove things back in my face like but Madeline you've been acting since you were three but Madeline you, you're sure you don't want to and me like no I just don't feel anything anymore you know and I'm like preparing what I'm supposed to say and I literally get a phone call from a number that I didn't know and I answer it and it was Harold Cronk and um, he said hey Madeline I don't know if you remember coming in and auditioning for me but you came in to read for me last year for a movie that I didn't even get and he remembered me and he said the Lord put you on my heart tonight really heavy and wow. I believe that you're supposed to be in my next faith based movie God did it on a Friday I got the offer on a Monday not one more day did he let me go wow. not one more day wow. word for word he answered my prayer but it was like this this weird shift happened when I when I gave it back to God he was able to pick it up and make it something that I never even dreamed it's not even even normal what God is letting me do it's mm. not even normal Amen. I'm I'm nothing I'm just a 23 year old girl from the valley like I'm not even <laughs> and he's used me in a way that I never would have dreamed but it's unbelievable because it's been it's so satisfying to me it's like every every door now that he allows me to walk in I just feel his presence it's not the same as it was yeah. before yeah. it's like there's this new you know um new call or this new anointing on on what it is that he's asking me to do and I can't wait to see what's next and already honestly if he didn't do another thing for me, honestly, I, I'm more ready to leave if he asked me to leave now than ever before wow. because I've seen him show up for me in such a real tangible way that I can't even explain. And all I did was say, God, you do it. God, you take it. God, you do with it what you want. My goodness, he's such a good father, Pastor. He's so, he's so awesome. good. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Thank you. You know what? The one thing they don't know, may I borrow your Bible real quick? Mm -hmm. One thing they... they Listen, I, everything she's saying, this is what I have seen in her in her journey. I've known her. Obviously, I thought it was two or three. It's one year old. And, I, and, I, and we, we have literally have prayed with her parents for different roles throughout your life. And anything and every opportunity that has come to their family and to her career, they have always brought it back to God. I mean, this is her Bible. I mean, this is, I, I mean, you literally moved in and took up every room. <laughs> Thank like, you. Like, you live here, right? <laughs> yes. And, um, and even when you, when you see her life, when you see her, her love for God, it's genuine. It's authentic. What you see right here, this is who, this is the Madeline I've known now for 21 years, 22 years, because you're 23, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I met your parents when I was 23. Isn't that amazing? That's 23 unreal. 23 when I met your parents. Wow. How time flies. But You've been consistent. You've been faithful. Your anchor has been God's word. And, and, and what's interesting is here you are. You're someone who has been blessed to, to have a calling into Hollywood because Hollywood needs Jesus. And so beyond the acting, beyond the, the, you know, the platforms you get to be in, God has used you also to really inspire and infect many people from the industry, which is awesome. Um, but one of the things that I have heard you all day is that you have to find yourself in someone in this bible that yes. has, that literally gives you the strength to keep going yes. like you mentioned david at the eight o'clock the ten o'clock and then i think about daniel daniel was uh, someone who had a dream from god god gave him a dream god gave him a plan a purpose but king nebuchadnezzar had a different way of doing things like the the standard of the world and and king nebuchadnezzar kept trying to get everybody to conform and, and to change and to bend his direction. But Daniel had this heart of saying no. Mm -hmm. and, and he literally asked the king's chef or his guard and, and said, hey, listen, um, I don't want to touch your delicacies. And it takes, it takes character. It takes integrity. It takes courage to say no to so many films that literally 
I mean, once you say no, they cut you off. Mm -hmm. I mean, you obviously experience this dry season. And, um, but what do you tell the young people? What do you tell the people in general that have had dreams and, and, and who have been aspiring to do something, uh, to be something for God, but that compromise always tries to come in to get you to kind of, you know, give up your value system? Like, what do you say to people like that? I try and always just remind them of, of who they are. Like, at the end of the day, whether you're a believer or not, what is your vision right now? Like, what is it that you see for yourself? And I love Habakkuk, too, that, that scripture that you shared um, about writing the vision plainly on tablets so that he you may run who it reads it. Yeah. yeah, I love this verse so much because we I have so much vision in my heart. Like, it's crazy. And I just keep that at the forefront of my brain. And people tell me all day long, you're too young. You're, that's not the way things are normally done. And, you know, that's not the way that things happen. And I just keep that vision in front of me. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I hear that. But I know what the Lord is showing me. And I know what I see. And I know that I am pursuing it. And I am running for it. And it may not come out to be exactly like the way I see it. But I know that it will be good and perfect and the way that God sees me and the way that God wants it to end up. And I think it's just continually reminding them and even just ourselves here it does, you don't have to be an actress or you don't have to be an actor or in right. the Hollywood industry just reminding yourself of your identity I love how Elijah goes and hides out in the cave right and he kind of takes a little breakdown and he's hiding and the Lord calls to him in that still small voice but I love when it says that when he calls him in the still small voice he puts on his mantle and he goes out to speak with the Lord. And what the mantle represented was his identity. He wore it as a prophet of God. And so sometimes we have to put back on our identity and say, yeah, no, I hear you. I yeah. hear what the world is saying. But what is it that God says of me? And just Very keeping good. that at the forefront of your brain, no matter what. And then I think that that really guides your decisions. Do you know what I mean? If, if I believe that I'm going to do movies and also be a, in ministry and speak, then I have a certain standard I need to hold myself accountable to in the content Very that good. I am making. Very good. You know? That's so awesome. Wow. Now, last question. Um, this role was beyond just a role. It mm. was way more, it had so much meaning to you. So much that um, in the services you were sharing about, about how you, you actually would go to movie theaters and just kind of be a stalker. Yes. Right? I did. Yeah, yeah. Share a little bit about that. I want them to hear this. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I really was a stalker because I was so, like, just imagine, like, like feeling all of that death and feeling all of that grief. And then, like, sitting in the theater, never did I ever imagine that I was going to see myself on the big screen again. I didn't ever think that. And I can't tell you how many times, like, I had... Um, went into the theater and it wasn't that I wasn't appreciative because I've always loved the Lord and I've always thanked God but there was something so different about it for me when I got to see Imagine I was so like relieved and thankful that God showed up for me on my bathroom floor and that he allowed me to see that again and um and so I kept buying these tickets right and I I would go and um and hide out in the hallway of like the theater to like see the people who were affected the most by it. And there was always like three people at least that like couldn't get up out of their seats. Like they just couldn't move. And um, in this one case, it was at Century City and um, it was my birthday. And I went there and I'm peeking in this hallway by myself and I see this woman and she can't get up. And I uh, walk up to her and I said, hey, are you okay? And she looks up at me and she's like, Shannon. And I said, no, I'm Madeline Carroll. Um, I play the part. I play the part. <laughs> But um, no, uh, I said, I, I just would love to talk to you. Are you okay? And she was an older uh, woman and she said, you know, I am a motivational speaker and I go around and I speak to people and I encourage people. And she said, I uh, gave up my son and I, th through social media, I see where he's went now and I see his family and I see that I have grandkids that I don't know. And she said, it's really been hard for me. And so I have tried writing to him and writing him a letter for a really long time now. And today I felt like I wanted to write it. So I, I sat myself down to write it. And she said, I just turned into this big old mess and I couldn't bring myself to do it. And I don't know what to say. And she said, I, I come to the movie theaters to distract myself. Isn't that amazing? The power of film. I, I came to distract myself to feel something else. And uh, I get in the elevator with this, this gentleman who was coming to see this movie and he told me that I should come see it so I bought a ticket it had already been on and I come in and 
she starts crying again and she said, I just want you to know that I'm going to go home and write that letter to my son. So thank you for, for making this movie. And I just was like so in awe of God in that moment because I had never, um, I'd never seen a movie do something like that. You know what I mean? When I did Swing Vote with Kevin Costner and we were promoting it, he kept saying in the interviews we would do, he would, they'd say, you want this to be a success, a success? And he said, no, I just, I want people to get their money's worth, whatever, you know, their money's worth was when they come see this movie. And I thought of that so much when Imagine came out because I said, my God, it's so much more than money's worth when people yeah. are reconnecting with their families, when people are forgiving and moving on. And, and that's the power of, of what kingdom is doing and their yeah. whole vision. And so if you can just keep them in, in your prayers that God would continue to bless this movie. Now they have, uh, I still believe coming out and they have to, at least in the beginning, keep making some hits before they, you know, can make a fall because, uh, you know, there's a lot riding on them. Okay. You know, God, God moved for you then, you know, what's he going to do now? So please just keep them in your prayers. And uh, guys, I can't even believe it. I can't believe all that God's done, but God can do that for you. God yes, is a miracle worker That's right. in all areas. God That's is right. multi-purposeful. Come he on. doesn't need to just, you know, in, in my lane right now, yeah, he's moving for me on my dreams, but in your lane in marriage, he can move for you in that lane. He can move for you in the lane of healing. He can move for you in the lane of ministry. Nothing is too hard for God. And I know that I know that I know that there's nothing that the Holy Spirit won't teach me. Come on. I am not unqualified. I'm actually very qualified. I'm probably more qualified than the people that are qualified for the job <laughs> because God is on my side. On. God is with Come me on. and God is with you and Woo. he has you. He has I you. I love that. I love that. Madeline, so proud of you, girl. Thank you. Yeah, super proud of you. It was so amazing Thank you to me. reconnect to with your mom and dad as well. Yes. And, uh, and I know that you're now in this shifting and I, I want us to I'm going to have Madeline pray for you if, you've, if you feel like you've lost your dream. You've lost sight of the vision that God has given you. Maybe you've never dreamed before. You know what? I remember when we started our school in Oaxaca and we had these kids. I asked, I asked all the kids. I would sit with them first and be like, what's your dream? They looked at me and they said, what's a dream? Oh, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That, they looked at me and, and when I saw them look me in the eye and say, what's a dream? I thought, man, I'll tell you, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so if you feel that maybe you've never have experienced a dream, God wants to download a dream in your heart. Maybe you've let go of a dream. I was telling the 10 o'clock service, you know, being here all day today, it reminded me of a dream that I, I kind of let go of. But I'm going to recapture that dream. I'm going to see it happen. I mean, we're already doing a lot, but this is a personal thing. I normally do everything on ministry, 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 ministry. I'm like, no, I, got, I want, God has a personal dream for me too. You know, so I'm like, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to recapture that dream, and I can't wait for God to get glorified with that dream. And the same goes with you. Maybe you've lost sight of your dream. Maybe you've lost sight of your vision. So I'm going to have Madeline pray for us in a second, but here's the deal. I also want to pray for Madeline because, you know, God... Listen, she's, she works in Hollywood, one of the darkest places, industries that you can work in. However, you can, you can have people like Madeline who are a great light. And no matter how dark the, the industry is, it just takes one light to come in and to shine around the people that she's working with. And what's beautiful is here you have a 23-year-old girl who is unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ who is ready and willing to share her faith with anyone that she comes across with. We're talking producers, writers, actors, actresses. She's unashamed. How much more should we be courageous and brave in our workplace to share the love of Jesus? We're talking Hollywood. Hollywood is where she gets the response where the movie director is saying, uh, what God are you praying to? Who are you praying to? No, there's no one's going to answer you. That's the industry she works in. But it takes courage. It takes bravery. It takes a, an intimate personal relationship with Jesus Christ to be able to respond. No, I'm praying to my God. And I'll, as a matter of, I'll just call you back. Let me pray. And, and that's what God wants for us. Maybe it's the dream of having a real intimate personal relationship with Jesus. Maybe it's stop being a fan of God and start being a follower of Jesus. Come on, we've got too many fans in the kingdom. God's not looking for fans. He's looking for followers. People that believe him. People that trust him. People that literally, they, let me pray about that. Let me, let me see what God has to say about that situation. And 
not just always relying on your own opinion, your ideologies, whatever theologies maybe you've come up with. God says, listen, you hook up with me. You get with me and I will download visions and dreams and hope for a better future. Amen. And so she's about to shift. God is opening the doors for her now to uh, write and produce and direct in Jesus name. And you did the first one. I still believe which that's just the first one. Okay. Already filmed. It's, and we're going to pray for God's hand on that film, but we're also praying. You see, one thing she said at the 10 that she didn't say at this one was this, she would go to auditions where she would say no. And then she would see these young girls that would come in and just say yes, yes, yes to everything. We're talking about nudity, vulgar language, all these things that just go against her character, her value system, her faith in God. And one of the things she said at the 10 was that when she would see these girls that would literally just be, they're like ox to the slaughter, really. That she was just like, God, use me so that I can give them an opportunity to say no to those things and to say yes to films like I can only imagine. I still believe in all the things that God's going to do. So I really believe that God is shifting her. It's no longer just about being an actress. It's, it's beyond that. I really believe that God is going to create a platform that God's going to give her a distribution center in order for her to create an opportunity for actors and actresses that want to use their gift and not prostitute it and, and to use it for God's glory. So we're going to pray for Madeline, that God would do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything that we could ever ask, hope, think, imagine, or even pray about today, that God would do more. Would you guys be in agreement with me with that? Yes. Amen. All right, let's start with this. Would you pray for us? Yes. If you have lost your dream, if you want to recapture your dream, if you want God to download a dream in your heart, I want you to stand to your feet. I want God to minister to you real quick. I'm not going to call you up. I just want you to stand. Maybe you've lost sight of your dream. Maybe you don't have a dream. Maybe you've lost vision. Maybe there's, it, it doesn't even have to be a dream or a vision to do something. It could be vision for your family, yes, vision for yes, your children. Yes vision for your career. I don't know what it may be. Maybe it's vision for your healing. Maybe you've been sick in body and you've just felt like you've lost sight of the power of God to bring healing to your flesh, healing to your mind, healing to your heart. And today you're saying, you know what? If God can do it for Madeline, God's a respecter of no person. If he did it for her, he can do it for you. Amen. Just lift a hand to heaven. I just hear the Lord saying, don't you know that I am able? Don't you know that I am able? to work on your behalf. Don't you know Jesus. that I am willing? Don't you know that I care? Don't you know that I'm here? Don't you know that I'm listening? Don't you know that I've watched you? Don't you know that I love you? And I just pray right now, God, for all the dreams and visions in this room, God, all the desires, Lord, at the root of it, God. A dream is a desire, Lord. A healing is a desire, God. We just ask, God, that you would fulfill all these desires, Lord. I just ask, God, that you would just come into their heart right now, God, and just do surgery, Lord. That you would just light it up, God, with a fire, God, with a new fire for you, Jesus. I just pray, God, that you would make yourself so real to them. I just hear... Psalms 4610, be still and know that I am God. Just know that. Just know that I am He. Just know that I am He and I'm able. God is so faithful to, to complete all of His promises. And I just confess that over them, Lord. I just ask that you would confess and believe that He is who He says He is. He loves you and He has a plan and a purpose. And I just bless that, Lord. I thank you, God, that you are so good, God, that you are so big, God. I just pray right now, God, revival over all of their hearts, God. Revival, Lord, over their ears and their eyes, God, that they would come to know you and see you in a new way, Lord, that they've never experienced before, God. I ask, Lord, that you would just give them fresh breath in their lungs, Father, because there's nothing like knowing you, God. There's nothing like seeing you, God. There's nothing like communicating with you, Father. And I just ask, Lord, that you would just give them a fresh outpouring of your spirit, God. We cry out to you right now, God. We cry out, God. I stand in the gap, Lord, of, of all these people that, God, that might not even, they might be like me, Lord, when I was 19 years old, and I didn't even have the breath to ask anything of you anymore, God. I was so broken and so shallow and so so upset, Lord, that I was so, so full of grief, God, that I didn't even have the breath to ask anything of you anymore, God. So I ask it for them, God, that you would just breathe on them, Lord, breathe on their situation, God. God, we ask all of this in your name. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below 
And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.